Bolt could be in trouble. Bailey is coming in there undefeated, very confident, and always with someone who hits that hard and their skills are that high and they're that confident, there's a chance he could win. Henry Cejudo versus Murab Bivayelishlimble. Mm -hmm. Two great grapplers, two great athletes, and it's an important fight. The winner of this could get a title shot against Shug. We'll see how the fight goes. Paulo Costa versus Robert Whitaker. I'm gonna pick This is guaranteed to be a good card. In this video, I'm coming at you guys with UFC 298, my official predictions. I'm fired up for this fight week. We've got a lot of banger fights on here. This is guaranteed to be a good card. First fight, I'm gonna go top to bottom. I'm gonna go Volk versus Taporia. In my opinion, Volk's keys to win is gonna be his leg kicks. He did a great job against Max Holloway. Ilya, you see it in the countdown. He when he was checking his kicks, I don't know if he always does that. He probably doesn't always, but he's just leaning into it, leaning into it, eating them. And if he's planning on eating Volk's kicks, for five rounds, he might be in trouble. You gotta remember, Volk used to be 250 pounds, so his bones are thick and dense, so his leg kicks are gonna be a lot harder than the average 145 to 160 pound human being. And for Volk, it's gonna be mixing it up. Sometimes mixing in some takedowns in there and not takedowns just to finish, takedowns just to clinch, takedowns to get him going backwards, takedowns to just get Ilya from opening up and, and, and finding his good sharp boxing like he does. And I think Volk's going to do a good job at, at, at pressure. And if he can get him against the fence, put him on the fence a bunch, I think that's going to be uh, uh, some keys to win for Volk. For Ilya, it's going to be sharp boxing. If he can come out there and, and, and check those kicks and start establishing his jab early on and then later start opening up with his combos, Volk could be in trouble. Ilya is an excellent counter puncher too. He can back up, sit on some right hands. He can back up, sit on some left hooks, and he's very sharp with those. So Volk's got to be careful when he is coming forward. This is going to be a banger fight. Remember, Ilya is coming in there undefeated, very confident, and always with someone who hits that hard and their skills are that high and they're that confident, there's a chance he could win, but I think Volk's got a chip on his shoulder. You see it in the countdown. He's got a chip on his shoulder. He he had to come off the couch and fight Ism for three weeks and people are like, oh, maybe he got knocked out so recently. Yeah, but Volk's a different animal and you guys know that also. So my official prediction, I'm gonna pick Volk winner by a five round decision. I'm looking forward to the fight. Let me know what you guys think. Next one, we got Henry Cejudo versus Murab Divayelishlimble. Mm-hmm. Talali Shvili. Say it how you read it. It's going to be important for Henry to come out and match Murab's pace. That's one of the scariest things about Murab. He comes out there with this pedal to the metal, frantic pace. Most humans that are frantic, explosive, and stiff like that and change levels the whole time they run out of juice, Murab doesn't run out of juice. He can do it for five rounds, which is scary. Obviously, it's going to be important for Henry to wrestle hard and turn it into a boxing match. If he can slow Murab down, stop his takedowns, turn it into a boxing match, Henry's got some sharp hands. He throws a good straight right hand. He's got some, some pretty sharp boxing. He really does. Another tactic they could have is put Murab on his back. Murab's not going to face many wrestlers that are that can put Murab on his back. And Henry, one of his best takedowns throughout his whole career, everything. He's got a great inside trip from the over-under position where Murab likes to hang out and hang on people. And I'm sure Murab's team knows that. Over, under, circling him off the fence, inside trip him. Now Henry's on top in Murab's guard. How does he react to that? I'm looking forward to this fight. This is a 15 minute fight. Two great grapplers, two great athletes. And it's an important fight. This very well, I don't know this very well, the winner of this could get a title shot against Suge. We'll see how the fight goes. For Murab, I think, Murab's got a lot of confidence. He's on a nine fight win streak in, in the UFC. You gotta have some serious skills to have that kind of win streak in the UFC and have the style that he has. The retirement is in Henry's mind. It's in the back of his head. He talks about it in his videos. I mean, he's not able to work as hard as he used to. He's been working hard his whole life. Eventually, your body's gonna start breaking down and I think it's slowly breaking down for Henry. So we will see. But for Murab, come out, outpace him and have that chaotic, funky style, changing levels, kicking, and maybe even Murab's shooting, not shooting to take you down, but shooting to drive you against the fence and then dirty boxing you in, inside the clinch. That's going to be his key. Let's see if uh, Henry's going to be able to keep up with Murab. I'm very, very curious about that. I'm looking forward to the fight though. My prediction, and this changed because earlier I thought Henry was going to be able to negate where Murab was good, but now seeing Henry, Aljo just got done fighting Henry. He's going to be able to give him a lot of tips to Murab. I'm going to pick Murab by decision. Let me know what you guys think below. Moving on. This one I'm looking forward to. This is an exciting fight. Paulo Costa, Freak of Nature, Specimen versus Robert Whitaker. 
another specimen. Freak of nature, fast, explosive, freak athlete. Paul Costa's 14 and two with 11 KOs. He hits hard. Both these guys are one and two in their last fight. Makes it interesting. Paul Costa's keys, I think, are going to be come out and back him up. Start backing him up. Robert Whitaker is very athletic and springy. He's going to be circling, but Paul Costa, if he can take small steps to the right, small steps to the left, and start cutting him off and get him on the fence. You see it in a lot of Paul Costa's fight. He throws long right hands. As soon as he can get someone on the fence and start unleashing his combos, he has great combos. He rips to the body. He rips to the head. He has a long right hand, and he hits very hard. His punches are really heavy and he's explosive and fast there's a reason he's got 11 ko's off 14 wins so that's going to be his keys forcing him back getting him on the fence and unleashing punch into the body robert whitaker is 24 and 7 and he's coming off his first tko loss to the champion ddp you can see it in the countdowns robert robert whitaker's got his four kids he's living a good family life he does seem hungry keys for robert whitaker is going to be the opposite obviously stay off the fence avoid sitting in the pocket and trading with paulo costa he hits too hard he's too explosive you're running a real risk if you sit in the pocket with this guy i think robert might come out and use a little bit of izzy's game plan and start smacking some leg kicks real low also robert whitaker is a good counter puncher he can back up and punch and wing right hands back up and throw left hooks he's dropped people multiple times backing up so he's a good counter puncher too. Those are going to be his keys. Mixing it up a little bit. Kicking to the head. Kicking to the legs. Staying on his bike. Making sure his back doesn't hit the fence. If I had to pick right now, I'm going to pick Paulo Costa by TKO. I think he's too hungry. He's going to come in there too fast, too explosive. And I think he might be able to ring Robert Whitaker's bell. Robert Whitaker's doing a lot of wrestling too, it looked like in the countdown. So if Robert Whitaker can mix in some takedowns here and try to take, zap the energy of Paulo Costa a little bit, take some explosiveness from, the, from those arms and those muscles, might be a good idea. But right now, I think Paulo Costa is going to get it done by TKO. Let me know what you guys think below. Next one. Here we go. Jeff Neal. Versus Ian Gary, we got a welterweight bout here. Jeff Neal is explosive southpaw, very springy southpaw. He's two and three in his last five bouts. Usually the UFC matches up people who win. This guy won two, so they match him up. But clearly they're, they're, they're trying to test Ian Gary. They're trying to build him in the right way. But Jeff Neal's a dangerous fight for him. He's been in there with great strikers. Not strikers quite as tall as Ian Gary, but Jeff Neal knocked out Mike Perry. And Jeff Neal knocked out KO'd Vicente Luque. Those guys are skilled, top to bottom, very good. And he knocked him out, so don't forget that. Keys for him is going to be floating away from Ian Gary's right hand, floating to his right the whole time, finding his left hand, finding his explosive straight left hand of the body, straight over the top left hand, straight left hand the whole time. Ian Gary, this kid's tall. He's a clean 6'3". 6'3", welterweight. That's, that's tall for that weight class. He's 13-0. Another one, 13-0. You got this certain level of confidence in you. You feel a little bit invincible when you, when you're, when you haven't lost yet. So keys for Ian Gary is going to be keeping him at the end of his punches. Even if he's backing up, keeping, keeping Jeff Neal at the end of his jab, slightly circling to his left, away from Jeff Neal's big power hand, finding a lot of long right hands, staying at his range the whole time, staying at his range, backing up, staying at his range, coming forward. So if I had to pick right now, I'm picking Ian Gary by decision. But I'm interested to hear what you guys uh, think also. And uh, for all you new subs, thanks for watching, guys. It helps out a ton. Like the video if you can and comment what you think below. And I'll see you guys next week. Actually, I'll see you guys probably in some of you guys in Han Anaheim. We're leaving this Friday. We're going to be at the fights, cage side. So see you there. And if not, see you next week on YouTube. Love all y'all.